Here we have the Acer TC1760. Chris G from Computer Stuff. Today we're talking about an Acer desktop. Now a lot of you may know that we're pretty big fans of Acer on this channel. They make cheap computers and they are built pretty well. Now their desktop computer, we've reviewed all of their previous versions of the same machine. And what we wanted to do today was sort of set some expectations on what you should get. So we were reading the comments sections on our previous videos and found that a lot of people that like to do some gaming and maybe some heavy hitting type stuff are buying this particular computer. So today what we want to find out is if this computer is capable of any kind of heavy hitting stuff like graphics design and gaming and if you should buy one yourself. Oh and of course we're just going to go ahead and talk about if it's any good. Let's get some specs out of the way really quick. So this comes with the 12th generation i5 processor, it comes with 12 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, and it comes with a 512 gigabyte NVMe solid state drive. It also has the UHD 730 graphics on it. All of that combined basically gives it a Nova Bench score of 2476. So for those that want a benchmark and know what Nova Bench is, you'll know what that number translates to, so I won't go into the details of that. But suffice to say, this thing is a little bit of a productivity powerhouse. This thing is definitely going to be awesome for those people looking for, uh, let's say, that, that office space desktop that's going to knock out Outlook, Excel spreadsheets, PowerPoint, tons of Chrome and Firefox tabs, Word, Access, all of those good things. This is something that's going to be sort of sitting in every kind of like nonprofit, uh, every sort of small business. And I also think that this is really good for people that might be doing also some like audio editing as well. Who is this computer not for? Well, it's not for video editors and it's not for heavy gamers. And I will explain why in a moment. But let's go ahead and knock out some of the input and output stuff on here really quick. So it comes with a DVD drive on the front of it. That's pretty awesome because a lot of computers aren't coming with that these days. So there are still some people that want floppy disks in their machine. And well, there you go. Uh, in terms of I.O., let me get the hat out of the way so you, you, know, you can see the moneymaker. Uh, has a USB-C 3.2 port, has a Type-A USB 3.2 port, and then it's got a microphone and headphone jack in there as well. It has a little slot for where they would put an SD card reader if it was, you know, it's funny, I haven't actually seen a more expensive model with that in there either, so they must have molded one out and just never put it in any of the models. But nevertheless, I'm sure there is an Acer desktop out there with, their, with it somewhere. On the back of the Acer desktop, you've got two HDMI ports, You've got two USB type A ports, a USB super speed, and then more two uh, USB type A ports, an ethernet, gigabit ethernet jacks to be specific, and then your three audio ports. Then of course, we you plug it in because desktops don't run on solar energy, people. But where they lack in renewable energies, they are really good in terms of capabilities. Now, let's go ahead and crack the side of this computer open. And we're gonna talk about why this isn't for gamers or video editors. So much like the old version of this desktop, it comes, the graphics card in this computer is very, very capable for doing low level gaming like Minecraft and maybe Fortnite and stuff like that on lower settings. But if you try to play anything like AAA titles, Grand Theft Auto, RDR2, you get the idea, not gonna happen. And as far as 4K video editing is concerned, it's really not designed for that kind of thing either. You could do some 1080p and maybe some super high compressed like 2K, 3K footage, but when you start getting into the 4K and anything raw, it's just not gonna, it just won't have it. Photoshop is also going to be particularly awesome on this computer as well, but with the lack of an SD card reader on it, and also maybe like some of the IO, lack of IO, yeah, I don't know, I'm, I would probably recommend a laptop for most Photoshoppers these days. Anyway, let's move right along. So a couple things I really love about it is that in the computer you do have space for two hard drive slots. Now you can either put solid state drives in there or two conventional hard drives for massive amounts of storage. They don't and can't run in RAID, but they are able to, uh, but, but basically you can use them as like a Plex server or somewhere where you need to stash like a lot of data. Again, maybe such as raw photo files or movies or something that you downloaded that you want to stream locally. Where it becomes a problem for those that want to do gaming or hardcore video editing is that while it does have a PCI Express slot in the computer for graphics card upgrades, the problem is, is that there's not really a whole lot of horsepower in the power supply 
in order to drive any kind of new graphics card. For example, a GeForce 1000, 2000, 3000 series, you get the idea. And the thing is, is that this case makes it almost impossible to upgrade the power supply. First off, the shape on the back of it is not conducive. You would have to dremel out a hole to fit a conventional power supply. But also, it doesn't have traditional ATX on the motherboard. It has a proprietary 8x4 or 4x4 system in it, which just really isn't going to be all that good. But what you do lack in upgradability in terms of the graphics card, they do give you a little bit of breathing room with the RAM. Uh, it is shared graphics, uh, a share, shared memory with the graphics card. So if you put 12 gigabytes in here, like which it comes with, you'll only have maybe like 11.2 usable. If you put 16 gigabytes of RAM in here, you get the idea. It just kind of takes a little bit for the graphics power. But you could go to 16 gigabytes of RAM if you want. And you could also add in not only the additional storage, but if you wanted to replace that NVMe solid state drive in there with like, let's say a one or two terabyte, that is possible as well. So it does give you a little bit of breathing room. This thing also comes with Windows 11, comes with Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2. So from a productivity standpoint, you're really not going to want for more. When you buy this machine, you just need to be aware of what you're getting. This computer is going to be great for like, let's say your grandmother that just needs a basic desktop to kind of knock out her email and internet. So again, good for nonprofits, good for businesses. But if you are somebody that is looking for a computer that has the ability to, if, you, if, it, if it won't game out of the box, but you want it to be able to game like in the future, I just don't think this machine is right for you. We have sold a ton of these. Quality-wise, reliability-wise, they are pretty darn great. So we think that everybody will have a really great experience with it if they buy one. Um, but just, you know, know, know what you're buying. Again, I'd probably use one of these things for like a Plex server in my house. It would be really great for that. Uh, and then if you're like, let's say, an audio editor, you could probably hook up a audio switch and a couple of microphones to this thing as well. With the exception that, like, I really think USB-C is kind of the king for that. And unfortunately, there just isn't any USB-C on the back. So what you gonna do? Anyway, that is our review of the Acer TC1760. Hope this was helpful for those looking to buy this machine. And if you guys have any questions, or guys or gals have any questions, please reach out to us in the comments section, and we will be back with another video really soon.